Either you have to, when you succeed, you've got to either succeed again or be ridiculed from there on. And that's the price you pay for success. You've got to be there. You've got to prove that it happened because of genuinity. It happens, it woke up, it woke me up from there on. From there my career changed. I actually did get three more gold medals. I went abroad, I did very well. But I wanted to create my life from there on. I wanted to chalk out my career. And believe you in my life, everything I wanted to chalk out never actually happened. I wanted to become a gastroenterologist. From default, I became a cardiologist. I never wanted to return to this country. My parents' emotional blackmail brought me to this country. <laughs> but if I had charted my career out, I would have been a nobody sitting in a small town in England. And because of default, the God above actually brought me back to this country, trained me in what I did not want to be ever trained in, made me do things and be at the place where I never wanted to be or never would have planned to be. And here I am. A success of default strategy as we call it. And the default strategy is truly the Lord of us. Now, I want you to realize that. And the reason for this realization is, let me just tell you, this guru, you know these leadership gurus who come to you, and I'm sure you all have heard of many of these as they taught you. And these leadership gurus that are sitting in one of these leadership se sessions, the leadership guru talking to me, and talking to all of us, saying, there are four things to a success. And I thought he was going to tell me the same four things I keep harping about. I said, you need to have a plan. You know, like the treasure map? <laughs> That's what he said. You need to have a treasure map. So you have this plan. You start out, get out of college, you have this treasure map in front of you. The treasure map has to be accurate. It's got to be genuine. So if it wasn't a genuine treasure map, you'd just be lost. You have to follow it to a T. So you created this map for you. You've got to follow it to a T and you say, I want, this is my life. This is how I'm going to run it. This is what I've got to plan out. I want it all planned out. And then there's got to be a treasure at the end. Obviously, if you created all that, you're aiming for something and there's got to be a treasure at the end. So if you have all this, believe you me, you've done it. You're successful. So ask him, tell me, okay, I have this treasure map and I say, okay, I go out of this door and I know it's genuine. And I go out of this door and it says go for three kilometers straight down the road and I do that. It tells me go right for another five kilometers, I do that. It says go, okay, left turn and you get to a forest and I get to a forest until here I'm great. And I see this tree and the map says go take ten feet under the tree. And it says there's a huge box of gold sitting out there and I dig and I actually come to this box of gold. And I pick up this pickaxe, want to break the lock and I break the lock. From there on this thing flies off the lock, the lock hits me on the head and I fall. And I fall and then never wake up again to see that pot of gold. So where is the success? Why? If you can explain to me that fifth variable, then I will say that you got it planned out to a T. Otherwise you got nothing planned out to a T. Because at the end I may walk out of the house and be run over a car. I may take a right turn and fall into a river. I may actually get to the, get to the tree and the branch falls on me and I may dig and my eyes are, are, are blinded forever and I don't have a pot of gold. So where is this whole issue I want you to understand. Now, we, I mean, I'm not talking, I don't want you to be believers in God. I want you to be believers in yourself. But to realize that success relates to a number of things. And the first one is, of course, you yourself. You've got to be really clear and ethical and absolutely devoted. But then never take it into your head that it's yours. Now, why are we talking about all this? I must tell you that the 20th century is something which has been a very fascinating time. Remember, who remembers when Wright brothers took the first flight? Who remembers? Does anybody remember? If, if there's anybody who remembers, I know that he is 100 years old. <laughs> well, 1903, Wright brothers took off, flew for 12 seconds, Orville flew for 12 seconds in a place called Kitty Hawk. 
From there to landing on the moon just took 65 years. In fact, in five years, they were able to actually fly a plane all across America. And by 65 years, in 1969, man had landed on the moon. It took, Alexander Graham Bell was 19, uh, 1880, and in 100 years, we got a worldwide web, so phenomenal that this communication in a whiz, as opposed to what Alexander Graham Bell did. So what, have you, what am I telling you? I'm telling you that we've lived in the most fascinating times. We're privileged to live in the most fascinating times that world has not seen for thousands of years before. It's happened in front of our eyes. Medical science has changed. Technology has changed. Anything which, everything which we see occurred in the last century and we were a part and witness to it. And therefore, it has enamored us. It has seduced us. In fact, we believe that science and technology are super related to everything else. And we don't just think that. Mind you, we actually pride ourselves in distancing, distancing ourselves from spirituality. We think that if we talk spirituality, we would be inferior, we would be humble, we would be nonsensical, we would be illogical individuals. And if we don't talk about spirituality, we would be smart, we would be calculated, it would be modern, which we, we, we would be, you know, uh, it, it could be anything, but we actually living in a different world. And when we talk about all this, in fact, I sometimes wonder that we actually forget, forgetting spirituality, and it's only spirituality which is going to transform us. Add on spirituality as you go out there and face these challenges, and spirituality does not mean ceremonies. Spirituality does not mean mean you're actually sitting at prayers. Spirituality does not mean religion. Spirituality is a belief in righteousness. Spirituality is understanding that you're not the powerful person. Spirituality is understanding that righteousness and ethics will get rewarded and everything else will gradually face it one day or the other. And when you combine 